So the question is today, are we or should believers be imitating Jesus? We are going to answer that question today on this quick Bible study on the topic of imitating Jesus. An unbeliever cannot truly imitate Jesus. If one attempts to do so, it will be a sham. No one can become a Christian by imitating Jesus. Salvation is only by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But if you are a Christian, you can and must imitate him in the power of the Holy Spirit. Every Christian is predestined and called to become Christ-like. We see this in Romans chapter 8, verse 29 to 30, and it reads, But those who foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, and that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and those who is predestined, he is predestined as well, and called. Those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. Christians are renewed in the image of God and are being transformed more and more into the likeliness of Christ. We see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, and this reads, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his image with every increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We also see in Colossians chapter 3, verses 9 to 10, Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. We also see in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 to 24, that reads, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put on your old self, which is being corrupted by the deceitful desire, to be made new in the attitude of your mind, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. We must imitate Jesus and we must walk as he walked. We see this in 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. Whoever says he abides in me ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Jesus calls us to become more like he is by imitating him. In John chapter 13, verses 2 to 11, it reads this, purposely modeled for his disciples as he washed their feet. In John chapter 13, verses 12 to 15, it reads, when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garment, and resumed his place. He said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and the Lord, and you are right, for so I am. And if then your Lord and, and teacher has washed your feet, and you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Paul instructs us to imitate Jesus in a in order to be a blessing to others. We see this in Romans chapter 15, verses 1 to 3. We who are strong must be considerate of those who are sensitive about things like this. We must not just ple please ourselves. We should help others and do what is right and build them up in the Lord. For even Christ didn't live to please himself. As the scripture says, the insults of those who insult you, O God, have fallen on me. We also see in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 1 to 2, imitate God therefore in everything you do because you are his dear child. Live a life filled with love following the examples of Christ. He loved us and offer himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. When someone wrongs us, we must imitate Jesus and not retaliate or get revenge in any way. He sets an example for us to follow. We see this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 to 21. What credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if you do good and suffer for it, you endure. This is the gracious thing in the sight of God, for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. Paul imitated Jesus so that he could be a good example for other Christians. We see this 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1, follow my example as I followed the example of Christ. And Thessalonians Christians soon became good models for others, partly by imitating Jesus and his disciples. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 6 to 7, it reads, You also become imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation 
with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you become an example to all the believers of Macedonia and Archaia. Christ-like obedience is the way to, to Christ, like enjoyment of a divine love and the way to have your joy made complete. In John chapter 15 verses 9 to 11, this reads, Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love, if you keep my commandments, and you abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have have spoken to you, so that my joy may be with you and may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. The hope of certainty of one day seeing Jesus face to face and being perfectly conformed to his image should motivate us to seek to be pure, even as he is pure. We see this in 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 to 3, and it reads, Dear friends, know now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when, G when Jesus Christ appears, we shall be like him, and for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. The risen Savior lives to God. We who have died and risen with Christ must do the same. This gives us Romans chapter 6 verses 10 to 12 and it reads, The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. And this is what I have for you. This topic is imitating Jesus. God bless you and God bless your family.